Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall, bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. Just before starting this video, let me tell you that AMD GPUs are in a very rough spot, especially now that Nvidia announced the RTX 5000 series. And damn. So guys, I just did a live stream from the Nvidia keynote at CES 2025, and we have some very, very interesting notes. And even though on the CES keynote they didn't bring performance numbers for the new RTX 5000 series, and even though AMD CES was kind of a letdown because they didn't show really anything about RDNA 4, but I do have some slides with some information that you can see on that live stream, we now have a lot of new information on Nvidia's website. We have the performance of these cards, we have the LSS4, and again, take this with a grain of salt because these are the results from Nvidia itself. We need to do proper testing, and I'm gonna show you a bit more about that. We have the LSS, we have Reflex 2, so a newer and improved technology of latency reduction, and they need this, they need this for the MFG technology that they are bringing to the LSS4, but we're getting there. And we can start with pricing, I guess, with a GeForce RTX 5070 being at $549, meaning that the price didn't increase, I believe. The RTX 5070 Ti at $749, the 5080 at $999, and the only card that had a price increase was the 5090 that increased to $2,000. But again, the 5090 is kind of a halo product, which is just for the people that have a lot of money or people that they really benefit from the card in terms of work capabilities. But still, in terms of pricing, Nvidia surprised us because nobody was expecting Nvidia to not increase the prices and they didn't. But well, now that I've seen the pricing, let's go to the, to the performance charts that we have here. And again, take these with a grain of salt because they are of course, from Nvidia, and we need third-party third party reviewers to actually do it. I want to do it as well, if Nvidia sends cards. Um, RTX 5070, we have several games, but if you notice, we have games only with ray tracing. We don't really have rasterization, but we do have a game with very, very light ray tracing, so basically using ray tracing on Far Cry is basically the same as not using at all. So we can, we can consider Far Cry as kind of a rasterization benchmark. Then we have Plague Tale Requiem with the LSS plus ray tracing, and then we have these. So we can see that Far Cry is around, let's say, 1.3, 1.4 times faster, and with Plague Tale Requiem being a little better, and this is because it is using the LSS, and I believe that with, with new and more tensor cores, uh, the new cards use the LSS better, so they don't, they kind of gain more performance with the LSS. Now, these numbers that, that you see here in Cyberpunk, like two times, and in some cases over two times faster, like Black Myth Wukong, if you see here the notes, it says 1440p, maximum settings, the LSS super resolution quality, and the LSS ray reconstruction on 40 series and 50 series. So, everything that we have now on the games that have it enabled, like Alan Wake 2, for example, that has ray reconstruction. Um, and we have f frame generation on the 40 series as well, which is great. But then we have MFG, which is four times mode on the 50 series. Um, and in this case, the Plague Tale Requiem only supports the LSS 3. And that's why it has the results it has. So in these two scenarios, it is using frame generation too, but the, the 5070 is well, let's say 40% better, which is not great, but it is fine. But as soon as you go to Cyberpunk, you have a huge performance increase of up to two times, and that happens because they're using MFG. So instead of generating two frames, one real frame and another generated frame, they are producing one frame, one real frame for each three generated frames. Meaning, once again, the four times mode. And that's why we are having this huge performance increase, because instead of, instead of creating one frame, we are creating three frames with MFG. Now, with the, with the RTX 
50 series, they are increasing and they are kind of putting the AI cores uh, on the shader engine as well, meaning that latencies should be better in terms of frame generation, but that's exactly why they are bringing again, they are bringing also the, um, the Reflex 2 in order to decrease the latency that we get from MFG, which is four times mode. I tested the four times mode with lossless scanning frame generation and it was already okay-ish, depending on the base frame rates that, that we have. And if lossless frame generation was already okay-ish with some visual artifacts, I believe that NVIDIA with very, very trained AI models can actually get some really decent performance. But I guess we have to see. In terms of the, the 5070 Ti, it is again, more or less the same, about what, about 40 to 50% performance increase. It seems that the 5070 Ti increases a bit more than the 5070 over its predecessor. Then we have Cyberpunk once again being two times faster because of MFG and with Alan Wake using Cyberpunk and Alan Wake using path tracing. And again, the 50 series increased the ray tracing performance by quite a lot and up to two times because we're using MFG and the same goes for the five render. As for the 5080, in terms of Far Cry and in terms of Plague Tale Requiem, it is more or less the same. I would say that it is from 30 to 40% faster or even less sometimes to 20 to 40% faster according to the, to the GeForce data that we have here, the NVIDIA data, um, than the 4080 not comparing to the 4080 Super, remember the 4080 Super is slightly faster, but in terms of ray tracing and path tracing, it will be better, especially if we're using MFG. The thing is the 50 series have a new and completely built from scratch architecture that is made to work with these frame generation techniques. And that's why they're using Reflex 2. And as you can see in Cyberpunk 2077, it means that Cyberpunk 2077, Alan Wake 2 and Black Myth Wukong will support the LSS 4 really, really soon. As soon as the, maybe the 5000 series drop out, these three games will support the LSS 4 and we'll see if it is really better or not MFG, if it really has a lot of latency or if Reflex 2 fixes that latency and so on. As for the 5090, the 5090 is the real, the real GPU that really brings some really interesting perform, performance gains, even without any kind of, of upscaling and frame generation, but at the same time, it goes to $2,000 from $1,500. Then Black Myth Wukong, Cyberpunk and so on, since we're running 4K maximum settings and we're running on the 50 series with MFG, instead of one frame per each real frame, we are producing three frames for each real frame. But again, it all comes to how NVIDIA can improve the quality, how NVIDIA can make this look great, and how NVIDIA can make this look, um, well, lag-free, kind of lag-free. We have now the LSS 4 with supreme speed, superior visuals, powered by AI. The LSS is a revolution, revolutionary, revolutionary suite of neural rendering technologies that uses AI to boost FPS, blah, 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 the usual things that we have powered by the fifth generation tensor cores. And we have a small video here. For example, I believe this is 4K, 4K with path tracing and that 4K native with path tracing, we have 27 FPS. And then we go and we enable the LSS performance and on top of the LSS performance, which the LSS performance alone would increase these results from 27 to let's say like 60, around that 60 in most scenarios, then we use MFG on top of that and we have 240 FPS. Remember, three times, uh, which is just crazy. Then we have full tracing with neural rendering, game-changing realism, and this is RTX Remix. And as you can see, this is uh, Half-Life 2, I believe. This is the normal game from 2004. And then we have RTX Remix enabled and we have newer models, we have the shadows there, we have way better textures, we have better foliage, we have better models overall, better lighting. I mean, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just completely changing the game. It's just great. Now we have NVIDIA Reflex 2. And again, they needed to implement Reflex 2 because they are also introducing MFG that since you are now generating or predicting three frames instead of one, it means that you'll have way more latency because the, the chain of command and because of the, um, not the timeline, 
that, that that's why I don't speak English natively. Sometimes I forget about the words in English. Um, but but yeah, the pipeline, the pipeline, I mean, uh, just has way more things, so the latency will increase. So they needed to come up with Reflex 2. And it seems that with Reflex 2, we have a massive decrease in some case scenarios. For example, here, going from 64 milliseconds, the full PC latency, and then we went from 60 milliseconds to 16 milliseconds which is a huge increase if true, but again, take this with a grain of salt because these are NVIDIA results. And then we have, of course, the, the NVIDIA architecture. And for example, in terms of ray tracing cores, we all have the fourth generation. But as soon as we look at the encoder, it is interesting because if we go to the 4080 Super, we have two media encoders of the eighth generation and the same works with the 5080. We have two encoders of the ninth generation. So the 5070 only has one, the same for the 4070. As soon as we go to the 5070 Ti, we have two. Let's see if the 4070 Ti has two as well. It does have, so it is fine. We still have the 5070 with 12 gigabytes, the 5070 Ti with 16 gigabytes, and, um, and the 5080 with 16 gigabytes as well. And the only card that increases the amount of VRAM is um, the 5090 going from 24 gigabytes to 32 gigabytes, and that's insane. Now, what you sh we should note here is that even the 5070, which is not something that we usually see, we see just the, the top tier cards getting the newer VRAM types, even the 5070 now has GDDR7. So all these cards have GDDR7, making the memory bandwidth go much much higher. We should have decent power draw. In terms of cooling ability, the coolers are actually way smaller. As you can see, for example, here, even the 5090, you can grab it like this in your hand and it is not a four slot GPU anymore, meaning they have vapor chamber and we have new features on the LSS side. And now I need to go to my live stream in order to show you this. By the way, availability starting in January, I believe that the 5090 and the 5080 the 5080 will be available in the end of January and these ones will be February and and March, I believe, or the end of February. And I want, uh, I really want to show you one of these things that they showed here. So this is the neural compression that they have. And this is the standard material, as you can see, and it occupies 47 megabytes of memory. Now we have the neural one that produces a way better quality, in my opinion, and it only occupies 16 megabytes of memory. So better quality and better memory, which means better memory compression, I guess. So RTX neural material, this is a great thing. And we also have this one here. So the LSS CNN, you can see the textures, not very clear, but then you use this with the LSS transformer and we have clearer textures and clearer details, clearer tessellation. Tessellation just looks better once again. CNN, as soon as you pass to the transformer, it just looks much better. So it is in fact a win-win situation. And basically that's it. And like I told you in the beginning of the video, AMD is in a very, very rough spot. Because if we're taking the 5070 as, let's say a 20 to 30% increase over the 4070, it means that in terms of rasterization, it should be really close to the 7900 XT. So about 10% of the 7900 XT, meaning, that the 9070 XT in terms of rasterization should be equal to the 5070. But the 5070 should in theory consume less power, be much better in terms of ray tracing, but again, AMD stated that they have huge increases in terms of ray tracing, so we must wait and see. They have ray reconstruction, they have the LSS MFG, the new technology, they have neural compression, they have many, many things. So if AMD doesn't price the cards correctly, they will, complete, they will be completely stomped. I believe that they need to price the 9070 XT at, at most $450, which is around $100 below the 5070 because the only thing that they have more, or I believe that the only thing that they will have more is VRAM and maybe rasterization performance because otherwise they will lose in every single aspect and they can't really go that route. I would say 399, but that would make AMD at loss, I guess. But yeah, AMD is in a very rough spot right now. And well, guys, that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, leave your like, leave your comment in the comment section and let me know what you think about these numbers and the performance that you see here. 
if it is true, if it isn't, if it will perform better, if MFG with a four times frame generation will perform well in terms of quality and latency with Reflex 2, for example, just let me know. But I'm really eager to test Alan Wake and those other titles with uh, the new the new mode frame, the new frame generation mode since I test frame generation a lot. I really want to see if it works well or not. That's really intriguing. Thank you and see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.